If I made this guy, I gotta have this, right? Well, if you're truly gonna understand what the way is, and this is the way, you gotta make yourself a Mando helmet. So, I found a great file. I printed one up and I painted it up and finished it up and figured I'd share my Mando build with you right here on 9142 Props and Armory. Now for the filament for the print on there, I used uh, Yoyi PLA, uh, got it off of Amazon, I'll have a link down in the description in that. Fairly inexpensive, I think I paid 14 bucks a roll for it, um, and it printed really nice. If I look at it, um, as far as things go, layers look very nice. The only issue that I had with it was through the fault of my own. Um, when it came to supports. And when I printed it, I didn't print any supports on the interior of the helmet, so there's nothing for the top. The only supports were printed on the edge right here because this is not a flat bottom when it sat on the bed. But one thing I neglected to do, I had supports that came and caught the center of the top of where the visor is, but I didn't get anything along the edges, so I'm going to have to go ahead and clean that up and fix that up so we can even that out because that really makes the whole look of the face on there look a little bit wonky the way that it is. So I'll go back in and fix that. I'll probably just either I'll use body filler but I'll probably most likely will build it back up with CA and, and build it up that way through a combination of that and, and filler. But looking at the print overall, the print is very clean. Um, the print didn't, you know, the model didn't move around. Sean did a couple really nice things when he modeled this next version, this fourth version. He put a little cross brace underneath where the, the visor goes. And my problem that I had with the first one is that the mandibles on here really flexed back and forth a lot as this was printing. So I got a lot of waves in the sidewalls on here. There's still a little bit of that. I think my CR-10 could use a little bit of tuning, um, maybe a little bit of tightening up. But overall, the print is really nice, and I don't have a ton of cleanup to do. So what I'm going to kind of do is just take you through the process of going through and starting with a helmet that looks like this, uh, right off your printer, to a finished product. Now on the other parts on here, on the detailed parts, on the ears on here, and then on the vents on the back too, I went ahead and printed those on my Anycubic Photon. The uh, reason for that is... I don't like sanding, and honestly, who the hell does? Um, so I printed those detail parts on the Photon uh, and a resin print so that I have something that's a little more forgiving and easy to sand, especially on these more detailed parts like the ears and on those vents on the back. Just because with the way that these parts are, is there's... I'm still going to have to do some sanding on there because we're going to be finishing this in a really metallic... Um, I'm going to use Alclad on there. The paint that is used on this is available. You can buy the Illumilustre paint. Um, however, it is not the cheapest stuff around. You can get four ounces of it, and that's the smallest quantity that you can purchase in that goes for about 80 bucks. A quart of the stuff is about 400 bucks for it. Um, it's amazing paint. It's used in the film industry. They use it in, on the Mandalorian suit. They use it in Marvel movies. It's really awesome stuff. But I'm going to try and replicate that uh, without spending a ton on the paint and see what we can do with Alclad, which costs about $10 for an ounce of it. And I think we'll get a really good result. So I'll take you along through the process. We're going to do a bunch of sanding and filling and priming and all those other good things. So I'm going to give you a look at the whole process of it. And hopefully when we're done, we're going to have something that's worthy of a Mandalorian. All right, so here's where the real work begins when it comes to 3D printing and finishing a helmet, especially on something that's going to have a reflective finish uh, like this Mandalorian helmet does. It really all comes down to your prep work and, God forbid, sanding and lots of it. So for the sanding on this helmet, I want to get as much of these layer variations taken down as much as I can, and I do have some rippling that happened in the printing as well, so I want to make that look as nice as possible. So I'll use a couple of different things 
Um, I will use a very couple variants of power sanders. Um, I like this one, uh, 120 grit on there, or 180 on this one actually, because um, this allows you to get into some places that you can't with a larger orbital sander or other types of sanders, but you can use a sander like this on something like this. The important thing is that you keep moving. You don't stay in one place for too long because if you do overheat your, your printed helmet, you are going to deform it, you are going to misshape it, and you will wreck it and create more headaches for yourself. But you can use it, you just got to be careful. So a combination of this and hand sanding uh, of a couple different grits, anywhere from 180 um, starting at about 120 down to 180 before we do the first coat of primer. So I'm going to do some more sanding and we'll get it to a point that I'm relatively happy with and then we'll throw some primer on there and repeat the process many other times. <laughs> Still got a ways to go really to make this as good as we possibly can but I'm gonna kind of leave it where it is and go start the filler primer process on here so we'll go put a coat on there uh, a first coat will be a very heavy coat uh, soak it on there real good let it dry completely sand it down and then repeat that process uh, over and over again and occasionally using some you know, blazing and spot putty too to get these really low spots taken care of that don't sand out after we put these initial coats on. So let's hop outside. It's a lovely 35 degrees outside outside Chicago today and we're going to throw some filler primer on here. So now it's time to get to the final steps of things. And the final steps in this version of it is going to be done with Alclad lacquer put on with an airbrush. I've used the Alclad for a lot of different things before in the past. I really like it. I like the finish that it gives. I like working with it. It is very forgiving stuff and pretty easy to to deal with so i'm going to continue on with that uh, cost on the paint is about ten dollars a bottle for it and expect to use probably a bottle and maybe a little bit more to 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 finish a helmet now this is what the alclad aircraft aluminum looks like on my helmet here after really a pretty minimal amount of prep work on there. I didn't go crazy with it. I could go totally full-on psycho with it and spent a ton of time of making the surface prep just impeccable on here. But I honestly, this is gonna go on a shelf. It's not part of a costume. I don't need it to be perfect. So you can see some imperfections in here. You know, you can see some of the layer lines. You can see some, some, some waviness in here and whatnot. Uh, but I think once I get around to weathering this up and doing that, a lot of that's going to kind of be hidden away. 
Now the thing with the aircraft aluminum from Alclad on here is that this looks significantly different depending on the lighting situation that you're in. Here in the shop, when I have uh, lighting for shooting videos, I have a ton of light and it comes up and looks really, really nice the way that it is right here. However, in different lights, low lights, it looks very dark. It almost looks like a black chrome. So keep that in mind that finding the right shade uh, for this and the right paint for this, if you use this, it's going to look different depending on the light that it's in, just like the one on the show does, and just like those original props that are painted with that Illumiluster paint look, you get a different look in different lighting. So when it comes to finish, your mileage may vary. All right, so one last thing to do to get this to a point of passability so that we can call this done, put it up on a shelf, and maybe come back to it later on is to add a visor. Adding a visor to these helmets is pretty easy. Um, what you do is you go on Amazon, I'll put a link down in the description, you order a grinding face shield replacement. Uh, they come a couple different ways. They come in clear, they come in smoke colors, they come in uh, very dark greens as well. Uh, this particular one is a smoke one. You make a pattern um, of what you need for the inside here as far as that, that T-visor is gonna be and you cut it out of plastic. You cut it out of the grinding shield and that is going to be your visor on the inside there. Now the one thing that I really love, one of the things I love about this model that Sean did is that he put a little bracket in between the mandibles here where that visor could slide in between and helps hold it in place. And then the other thing that it did too is when you're printing, and when you're finishing it, it gives rigidity to the front of the mask here so that things stay in place, which is really awesome. So once you get that slotted out and you have your mask cut, basically what you're going to do is you're just going to slide that into that channel that he's put in there. Pull it up and through. Push that guy into place. And there we go. Now it's, you don't have to be really precious about the way the inside of this looks. You can make it really look nice on the inside depending on what you're gonna do. If you're gonna wear the helmet, if it's gonna be part of a costume. Um, most of the time, if something's just going to sit on the shelf for me, I'm just going to use duct tape on the inside of this to hold that visor up nice and snug against the inside of the helmet and get that finish, um, to get that looking kind of the way that I want it to be. So there it is. The Mandalorian version 4 helmet from Project 842. Uh, his files are available on Etsy. There will be a link down in the description and links for other things used in the process of building this helmet as well. I may revisit this down the road. We'll go through and do a weathering video on finishing this up once I get that paint color and finish where I'm happy with it. Not 100% sold on the, the uh, aircraft aluminum yet, but I do like the way that it looks so far. So we'll revisit this probably down the road, but for now we're gonna call it good and I think at least we're, we're ready to, to be sporting a passable Mando helmet that looks pretty damn nice. So excellent work on the modeling, Sean. Files are great. Go get them on Etsy, print yourself up one. If you do, share it with me, let me know. Uh, over on Twitter or Instagram, tag me on there. I'm at John Weger. Uh, and either one of those places, uh, you can find me. And I hope that you make one too, because it has been a lot of fun. So thanks for watching the video. Thank you for going ahead and uh, giving the thumbs up to it and subscribe to the channel if you have not. There are a lot of changes coming. Um, I've got some new toys to play with. I'm getting into 3D modeling. I got a new laptop and I have been doing that quite a bit over the past couple days. So look for more build videos coming up of projects that I have modeled um, that will be available for you. Models available for free and out there for the community to use 
as you will. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't yet, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you can see all those new things that are coming up. The first project that's coming up that I've modeled is an Electroprod for a first order Stormtrooper as seen in the newest Star Wars film, The Rise of Skywalker. That will be coming up here probably on Sunday. I have the rest of the files printing up right now as, we, as I speak. And that video will be up over the weekend detailing that build and those files and how you can get those. So thank you very much for watching. It's John. I'll see you later.